Okay, this video is going to go over chapter four in payroll accounting, um, where we are calculating the taxes withheld. So I'm gonna do two of them. Now these first problems tell us that um, we are using W-4s from 2020 or later. So you do have to be careful when looking in the textbook um, that they give you two different tables. So we're using the W-4s from 2020 or later. So the first one asks us to complete our percentage method. Instead of using the tables, um, we're going to use the percentage method, which is also located um, in your appendix. Um, the first couple pages of that appendix material the T, um, that, that deals with the tax tables. So it has the 2021 percentage method tables for W-4s from 2020 or later. And so this particular one we are looking at is weekly, the first one, so James. So if I go to the tax table um, and I look at my weekly tax table, and then James is, tells us here, he's um, married filing jointly. So again, I'm going to the weekly, and I guess it, um, the weekly, Married filing jointly. And it's in tax table A. Okay, so then I go down and it says if he has at least, um, if I look at his, it's 1610 a week. So if I follow that down, it goes from 865 to 2041. So that's his category. So that's the line that he is in. So then the amount to withhold is $38.20 plus, oops, I don't want to turn that into a formula quite yet. So we're going to say plus 12% um, of the amount that exceeds $875. So then if I go to his actual he's making 1680 or sorry 1610 the amount that exceeds $875 $865 sorry about that if I can speak okay so then if I do this and say okay that's his wages um, and I subtract the 875 that is the amount that exceeds and then if I take that amount that is exceeding that line item that they gave us and multiply it by the 12%, that will be his taxes. So again, you know, I'm just pulling these numbers off of that table. Um, and then his total tax is going to be that $38.20 plus what I just calculated, the amount that it exceeds the $875. So $126. Um, 70, sorry, 127.60 should be his total withholding, okay? Then we move down to the bi-weekly table. So again, I'm looking at the tables. Um, so right below it is the bi-weekly table. Now in this case, this person is single. Um, so again, it's in the same area, but it's, but it's just down below to the bi-weekly. And then I look for the single category. So the single category, he makes $825. So as I look through those line items, it goes from um, uh, 483 to 865. And then if I carry that over, it's zero taxes plus 10% um, of the amount that exceeds $483. So again, his is 825 minus $483. So then I will net those. So he's $342 over that limit. So then that's going to be subject to the 10% tax. So I'll multiply those two together. So $34.20. So then I'll add the zero plus that what I just calculated for the amount exceeding it, so that would be his total withholding.
Okay, then we do the next guy so that they are married filing jointly and semi-monthly. So again, go over to the next page. We have a semi-monthly pay period table. And then we want to go into our married filing jointly section again, because that's what that stands for here. And again, semi-monthly. So he is at 925. So as I look at that table for semi-monthly, he's in the very, very beginning range. So it's zero through 1,046. So as I carry that over, the tentative amount to withhold is zero plus, oops, it will be zero percent. So it's going to be nothing. So if I come over here, he's going to have zero withholdings. So there's nothing to even compute because he's at that very, very lowest tax bracket. Okay, then finally our third person is married filing jointly and monthly. So that's the final table down below. So then his, his wages are 2875 a month. So as I look through that table for married filing jointly, um, we've got um, the range is 2092 through 3750. So that's where he would fall in. And then the taxes withheld are zero plus 10% of anything over 2092. So then I will sum those or net those. So he's $783 over that threshold. So I'm going to take that amount that he's over, multiply it by that 10%. So it's $78.30. And then I'm going to add that to my zero. So that will be his total tax withholdings. So then that's how we compute that. And again, we're just going through the tables um, and you know, finding the right, the right uh, pay period if it's weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, monthly, and then calculating those out. Okay, then this next one um, gives us a pay register with their total earnings, tells us it's their 51st weekly payday, and then wants us to calculate all of their taxes. Um, so the, now in this case, though, we're not, we're using the wage bracket method. So the wage bracket method, we're actually going to go to the tax tables. And then again, make sure, though, as you're reading the titles of those, we want to use the tax tables that um, have a W-4 from 2020 or later. Okay, so. Paging through the books to find it. Okay, so now I'm, I'm in the right section though. So again, you just got to read those carefully to make sure you're in the 2020 or later. And in this case, it's weekly. So, so that's going to be the first group you come to. So our weekly payroll, 2020 or later. So as we look through um, John, Um, his total earnings are $2,850. Now, what I'm going to add here, though, is this. They, so we are in the 51st week payroll, which means there was 50 weeks prior. So if I take this amount here and I multiply it by 50, that gives me his year-to-date wages so far. And that's going to be applicable when we get to our um, old age or our, or our um, Social Security tax. So for right now, though, this is his weekly pay. This is the one we're going to focus on for right now, though, is this one. Um, so if I go then to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just hold off on the um, these ones. I'll come back. I'll title them, though. And I want to jump to the 
uh, federal income tax while I'm in those tax tables. Okay, so if I come to the federal income tax table and I look at and I go down to um, he is going to be over that limit. So the, the biggest amount we get to is the $1,925. So he is over that. So when they are over that, we got to go back to the wage bracket. So our wage bracket for weekly, and he is married filing jointly. Again, it tells us in there. So our married filing jointly, he's going to be at that higher wage bracket. So I'm going to try to just put this in as a formula. So it's $179.32 plus um, 22% times the amount by which his salary exceeds $2,041. Let's see if that formula works for me. Whoops. Do I accept this? I do. Okay, so then let me double check that that calculated out correctly. Um, but I think it looks like it did. All right, so 357.30. Yep, okay, so that's correct. All right, so again, we had to go back to the... Um, um, to the formula or the percentage method because it, his, his pay was so high. Okay, so then now the next person will come down, Jennifer Smith. Her weekly payroll is $275, so obviously she's going to definitely be on these tables. So if we go to the tables and we find $275, again, the range actually is the um, 265 to 275. She is single, so if we carry those forward over to single and married filing separately, it's going to be um, $3 or $4. So we go with a $4 amount, so it's up to 275, and then 275 to 285 um, is one bracket below. So it's gonna be a $4 federal income tax, um, then Bolin, Katherine is $250, and she is married filing jointly. So $250, if we look at the brackets, it goes from $245 to $255, so that's our column. Married filing jointly is zero. So that's a zero. Then we come down to Mary Matthews. And Mary Matthews pay is $320.25. So $325, if we find that, it goes from $315 to $325. Then we carry that over to what she category is. And she is single. So if I carry that over to single, she is going to be at $8. Then we have... Um, I can't, I can't if I'm spelling that right, but that's what I'm seeing. Um, Bonnie, and Bonnie is at 450, and again, go to the tables, find 450. So it goes from 445 to 455, and she is also single, so we're going to carry that over, and it's going to be $21. And then finally, we have um, Sean Camp. And he is at 560.50. So if we go from 555 to 565, and then we carry that over to single, and single would be $34. Let me write that in and we'll go back. Um, then we have. Um, I don't know, sometimes my eyes aren't the greatest, but I think that's what that says. Um, so Helen, Helen has $475.50 as her weekly pay. So we find that we go from $475 to $485, because again, she's just a little over the $475. And she is single, so we'll carry that over to the single line. 
and that is $25 for federal withholdings. Okay, then finally we have Josie Gleason, and Josie is $890 paycheck, and she is married filing jointly. So we find the $890 in the, in the table, so it goes from $885 to $895. Married filing jointly is going to be $41. Okay, so then we've looked up all of those. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take this formula, because if you look up in my cell, I'm taking the weekly amount times 50 weeks to get their, their year-to-date rate wages and carry that down. So the only person who's in this threshold that we're going to be over the limit is this first person. So I'm going to go over here. The limit is $142,800 for 2021. So if I take this, whoops, if I take this and I subtract that, only $300 is left. Um, tax. So then if I come to the this, I'm going to take this value here and multiply it by 0.062 and that's all that they'll have to pay for their um, old age or social security tax. Now then this cell is going to be their whole weekly amount times the 0.0145 because the whole amount is subject to Medicare and then the state is going to be this amount times it tells us up here that it's two percent of the total earnings. So we'll put that in and then we'll do the same thing for the city. It's going to be their full pay, but in this case, it's going to be times 1.5% because it tells us up there 1.5%. So they always have to tell you what that is. And then our net pay is going to be our gross pay minus Social Security withholdings, Medicare withholdings, federal income tax withholdings, state income tax withholdings, and city income tax withholdings. So I'm going to let Excel do that work for me just because it makes it a little bit nicer. Um, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to carry these formulas, except for this first one, but I'm going to just drag them down. So it's going to do that all that math for me for all of these. I mean, that's what makes Excel nice is you don't have to manually do all these. Now, again, the rest of them are not at that limit, so I'm going to have to change my formula for the old age tax. So if I take their weekly amount times the 0.062 because again none of them are at that limit they're all below it so it's all of their wages are fully taxable so then that is all of your net pays and then again here um, you know the, the sometimes rounding can come into play here because um, like I'm gonna I'm gonna push it back oh I guess I can't let's see if I carry that down Okay, so then that pushes it back. Um, so then it rounds for me. But like as I'm looking, I'm comparing my answers to the answer key, and there are some that I, that it's rounding up and the answer key is rounding down. So be careful when you put those into like your graded assignments that that penny can make it can make you wrong. So if you see that it's one that's rounded, you know maybe try to round it down, and then if that doesn't work, round it up. Okay, so I thought this one was a good one, though, because it, it you know, it refreshed your um, Chapter 3 skills on calculating out that old age um, Social Security tax as well as the Medicare tax, and then used the tax tables to create the um, federal income tax withholding. Your state is always going to be given to you as a percentage, and the same with your city. So you just got to pay attention to what those are. Okay, so that is it for... Um, what I wanted to show you for chapter 4.